Hey, everybody. Hey, people have really been enjoying a lot of the subject matter experts that I brought on, and uh, they've, they've asked for more of those types of subject matter experts. In particular, there are a lot of new firearms owners, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to actually kill two words, one stone, because this T-shirt that I have on, that logo, you guys have been asking an awful lot about it. You know, can I buy it? What is it? What's that organization all about? Well, today, I'm going to introduce you to the organization and the two founders and uh, very good friends of mine, known uh, known uh, one of them really long, and the other one's become a great friend just in the last year. Um, just outstanding individuals. Now, they have a unique program that, uh, in response to what's happened with COVID and all the gun sales and all the new gun owners, and uh, it's just an outstanding program. Again, you've heard from a lot of other experts. I really want you to hear from these guys because they have a very unique and specific approach to how to put together a program that involves firearms for your self-protection. And they're going to make some, some, some surprising statements, not a lot of the normal statements that you hear. So stay tuned for that. But before you do that, make sure that you support the channel. It takes a lot to do these videos. It really does. And I appreciate every, all the feedback I get from you guys. But please continue to share because YouTube will not allow us to grow. They, they really don't like this subject matter. And they're not helpful in any way, shape, or form. So it's up to you guys to help me grow. And... When you do that, I hope you subscribe, encourage your friends to subscribe, hit the notification bell, make comments on the video. That really helps as well. That starts getting us ranked. Um, and anyways, if you care about this type of material and getting us through all this censorship, then supporting a channel like this really helps. We've grown phenomenally fast. Uh, but in the last month, I'll be honest, they've tried to stall a lot of things because, uh, they demonetized a lot of the videos. They've done lots and lots of stuff because this subject matter was getting too popular and too many views. So please let your friends know about it because that's how we'll be able to continue getting this information. Also, if for some reason, anything ever happens, we have everything up on rumble. Now getting to dark desert defense. It is a training company that's based out of Las Vegas, utilizing a lot of the assets that uh, uh, I'm part of and um, personnel that are really just outstanding individuals. Now, the first individual, first founder that I want to introduce you to is my good friend, Steve Sanders. This is a picture of him. He's a consultant for Call of Duty Modern Warfare. He's also been a consultant for a variety of shows uh, on TV. He did um, uh, Zack Snyder's Man of Steel uh, he worked on Batman versus Superman. He's a highly sought after consultant to the point to where the guys that call of duty actually, actually model the character after him up, up to his tattoos. It's, it's pretty funny, but Steve's just a low key guy. Um, former seal, uh, master chief, 11 deployments. Uh, I'm sorry, 10 deployments in his 11 years at uh, seal team six, uh, dev group. He, um, highly, highly, you know, decorated silver star, four bronze stars, um, really well respected. Everybody I know within the teams that I mentioned his name, they just kind of nod. You know, he uh, he has an excellent reputation. But what I think is even more impressive is as qualified as he is, as he is and as you know, hunter killer background that he has. He's amazing when he goes to train people. He just makes everybody comfortable, and he really knows how to. Um, calm people down and, and actually give them very good, solid training. The other principal is my longtime friend, Mr. Genghis Cohen. Uh, Genghis is my partner in Machine Guns Vegas, along with my buddy Jim. This picture will kind of explain Genghis. You know, he's a, he's a Kiwi, former Army, um, very good firearms instructor, amongst other things. This is a picture of him. He's a helicopter pilot. This is him. Uh, and that is, he's on the far uh, right. As you look at it, the guy in the middle is our buddy, David Parasat owns Speed Vegas, Exotics Racing, and the woman holding on to the saw machine gun literally did not want to let it go. That is Michelle Rodriguez, the actress known from all the Fast and Furious and all the other things that she's done. She's really fun. We've had her out here a couple of times training and she's just a blast. Um, but these are the two guys that, you know, for quite some time when, uh, I got out to Vegas, Genghis and I were always talking about saying, you know, we really would like to develop 
a really good training base here in Vegas because it's an excellent place for customers to come into. It's easy to get to. The training areas that we have are very close. And we've been looking to do it for years, but we really didn't have the right setup. We really need, we really need somebody to, that could be in Vegas, locate, and give us that you know, high-end training um, curriculum. And Steve is formerly, you know, from Boulder City. He's come back to live in Henderson, um, Nevada, which is right next to Vegas. And he has helped us put together just an outstanding program with Dark Desert Defense. And so I went to my other uh, facility, Machine Guns Vegas, to do an interview with both of these guys. And I think you're going to really enjoy it. Um, Note that a lot of what they're about to say is all coming from the perspective of how they would look at new gun owners. Because the, the big question right now is we have 11 million new guns that were sold during COVID. And the sad truth is most of those people probably have never trained with their weapon. And it's this problem that we see all the time. This particular interview will be really worth it to your self-protection uh, knowledge as these guys kind of go through you know, the basics of the course work that they teach and why they teach it that way. So... Dark Desert Defense, the boys are up. Well, you're probably not used to seeing me do something live with people actually here. I haven't done this one in a while. Um, it's great to be in Vegas. It's great to be here at Machine Guns Vegas. Um, it's a place that Genghis and I started uh, 10 years ago uh, with our partner, Jim. And, uh, you know, recently uh, we've been able to bring in Steve, who's just come up and really upped our game as far as uh, the type of training that we're going to be able to offer. And they put together Dark Desert Defense, which is these really cool t-shirts that you guys see. You always ask me about this, and I don't tell you, now I told you. This is it. We're ready to talk about it. Um, what I think is really interesting is the timing of where we are right now uh, in, in the country. We've seen two years of craziness. We've seen, we've seen you know, uh, situations that were like a prepper's wet dream, and it actually been true. You know, it's happened, people have, uh, there have been call for services that were, went unanswered, police forces have been, de you know, have been told to stand down, stuff that was unthinkable. People had real things. Obviously, gun sales surged. And what was really interesting in my conversations with you guys over that time is, when you put together your program, and a lot of people that we train, which is really interesting because, you know, at Steve's level, you don't have to stay here, but you, you like training new people. And, but there's a challenge to training new people correctly because a lot of people just buy these things and they think they're like this magic talisman. They just, you know, hopefully put in a safe, uh, hopefully secure it correctly. But can you guys talk to the, to the effect that when you guys came together, and decided to do this. What was the approach that, that you guys like to take when you have a new gun owner coming in? What, what do you see the mistakes being made? And when you have a chance to work with them, how do you like to guide them? Um, well, so for those of you out there that have made the decision to go buy a gun, great. That's, yep. a, that's a good start, especially for somebody that has never owned a gun before. I mean, that takes a lot to walk into a gun store and buy a gun, hopefully it's a Glock if you're gonna train with us. Um, <clears throat> that's another uh, discussion, maybe later on. But um, yeah, our biggest thing here is to teach people, you know, gun safety and to be comfortable loading and handling the gun, you know, in any situation, anywhere. Um, so when you come in to us, we're gonna talk to you, there's gonna be a lot of safety. Every single one of our programs starts off. Um, but we have a lot, of, a lot of time just talking about safety, gun safety in general, and then from there, once they get down to all the basic shooting fundamentals, um, we get all that dialed in and then we move on. Yeah. So, and we start talking about um, defensive shooting and that's what we do here. We do defensive shooting. We don't do competitive shooting, um, although we do do training, but it's more along the defensive um, or combat shooting is okay. sometimes I like to describe it. I'm not a competition shooter, neither is Genghis. We've been shooting for many, many years, um, probably combined. Probably, Genghis and I combined have probably been over 50 years of shooting. Um, knowledge, we shot with different units. Um, Genghis in the Army and then with my uh, Navy background. So, yeah, we have a lot to, uh, a lot to offer in, in regards to firearms training, for sure. 
you, you saw, I remember when we first started doing this, you saw a real need. There are a lot of industry people. Mm -hmm. And when I say uh, Vegas industry, I'm talking like the nightclubs and uh, the, the casinos and everything. And obviously, this is a 24-hour town, so there's, there's a couple of different, uh, you know, timelines where people work. And people were coming to you and saying, hey, I really, I, I, I feel unsafe. This is prior to COVID, we were having this. And, you know, can you, can you help get us trained? And what was interesting was those people were people that never before ever, probably they never even touched a gun before, and they, and they came in. But it was interesting. You had, you had a really good way of, of, of talking to them and, and talking them through it. Yeah, I think, you know, I think a lot of people, especially, especially in the nightlife industry, you know, um, we're worried about safety issues. You know, they're leaving their job late at night. A lot of them are carrying, you know, if they're in the tipped industry, they're carrying cash on them. So there's a lot of issues that they've got. And, I, you know, I just started, I didn't realize, like, how many people own guns. And when I said, oh, you own a gun, you know, you should come down. If you want to do some shooting sometime, let me know. And they go, oh, yeah, I'd love to. I've never shot my gun. But, but I have a CCW. I'm like, uh, you have a CCW, but you've never shot your gun? And they're like, yeah, never, ever shot it. Never. I, I tried one out at the range, and then I bought, bought mine and never, ever shot it. How long have you had it? Four years. You know, I keep it under my bed loaded. It's like, to me and to Steve, that's a recipe for disaster. So I started, you know, I started to see, so, you know, there's an opportunity to train people. I think, you know, what, Steve's, what Steve said is, to me is the biggest thing is, you know, we wanted to teach people to be able to defend themselves with a gun. You know, like Steve said, we're not competition shooters. We're not, you know, we're, we're not going to teach people to go out there and do hostage rescues. We're just going to teach people to defend themselves and their families with a firearm. And, um, and, you know, I think that's an important need, especially in this environment right now. And Vegas, like everywhere in the United States, is just, you know, there's just more crime happening. There's more violent crime happening and there's a greater need for these things. I think one of the biggest learning points for people that come in here with a pistol are like, yep, I want to defend myself with a pistol. I want to carry a CCW. I want to be competent and proficient with it. And they come in here and they start shooting and they're like, wow, that's where the light bulb comes on. They're like, I don't know how to shoot this thing at all. Yeah. And they're terrified of it. They don't really know how to load it. They don't know how to unload it when it goes dry. So there's a big learning curve. And usually I tell people when we first start off our course, the first hour and a half of this course is all just briefings and PowerPoint stuff. Um, not in a boring way, of course, but you know, I'm like, hey, you're gonna be drinking from a fire hose here for the next hour and a half. And you're probably gonna get about maybe half of it if you're lucky, but the rest of it is all gonna be um, practically learned on the range. And when people get on the range, you know, that's, that's where the light bulb comes on. They're like, wow, I really don't, I really need to be here. I really need to be here, and I've taken guys, I currently have a, a client right now I've been training with. I mean, I don't think he ever touched a pistol, maybe once or twice when he was in the Army um, 20 plus years ago, and I've been training him, and, and um, you know, and here's the thing, just as a little sidebar, you have to put, you have to put in the time. It's like anything. If you go to the gym and you want to get in shape, you have to put the time in, because if you don't, you're just basically you're just going through the motions, and you're not going to get anything out of it. And our, our premier client, or our perfect client, is somebody that comes in here and puts in the time and puts in the effort and trains hard and stays current. And those people, those are the people that are gonna go, they're gonna be shooting at a very, very high level. Yeah. Like the guy I'm currently training right now, I mean, he's, he's at a level, like he's doing draws on timers, we're shooting steel, he's only been shooting for two weeks. Right. He's only been shooting for two weeks, but he's been shooting with me almost every day and he shoots hard yeah. like really hard um so those are the kind of people that those are our clients those are those kind of people that are willing to come in put in the effort now do you have to come in here and want to draw on the timer and do all that you don't have to but you're going to get a lot more out of it and you're going to be the person that i'm going to send home and go you know what you can protect yourself with that gun in your house anytime and uh, I, i'm not breaking in your house no. you know I mean? <laughs> so that's that's our ideal client and um but Having said that, you know, that we've had people come in here and do two or three sessions with us and then, you know, and then leave, so. Yeah. And I think this, the, pro, it's the way that, and Steve wrote the program and um, he, he did a great job of taking sort of like a, a tier one training program and then really breaking it down to, to figure out, okay, if this is a tier one training program, this is the portion that a civilian can use to defend themselves. And he did a great job of breaking that down and. You know, I, I tell students all the time, they say, well, you know, are you going to be able to make me a good shooter? I said, 
Steve or I are going to give you all the tools you need to be a good shooter. But at the end of the day, it's like Steve said, you have to put the time in. You know, it's like Steve and I ride motorcycles together, you know, and we ride off road all the time. And same thing, you know, if, if you want to ride a, a motorcycle off road and be safe, you've got to get the seat time. You've just got to put the time in. Um, so the way that, and, you know, and I'm not taking anything away from other people's training programs, we're a little bit different. Your progression is totally up to you. So, you know, Steve has developed shooting standards and we have like different components of our training program, but just like the military and all three of us were in the military, you don't go to, to, to you know, to phase two until you pr have proven that you know everything you need to know from phase one. And those are training standards and we test you on those training standards. And then when you meet those training standards, then you can progress to phase two. So, you know, we might have a student who's here for, like the guy that's training right now, like, you know, he's probably at phase three right now, but, you know, Steve's tested him already on phase one and phase two. We might have another student who's here for two months at phase one, right. you know, because it's just, you know, you've got to learn. Yeah, well, have, my name we have has some people, you know, some people, they click in the first two hours of shooting right. and some people don't click for two weeks, right. but in three months, they're both at the same level. You know, so well, I think that's the other thing people need to understand is like <clears throat> it's not a one and done type of thing. If you, if you have something like this, if you're going to use this for the idea of defense, you know, defensive purposes, then it's something it's a, something you're regularly going to have to work at to 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 feel confident that you'd ever use it. And that was one of the interesting thing, things too when you were explaining to me the fact that it's actually easier, you know, to shoot the shotgun to shoot to control that and all that. And, and I don't think people really understand just how much variability there is when you're putting one of these things in your hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, that to me was pretty fascinating when you were talking about that. It's like, actually, this is, this is the hardest thing to, to shoot. And most people think it's because of its convenience and you can get it's in. It's small and it's, yeah. yeah. They, don't, they don't take into consideration, hey, controllability and everything, this is gonna be a lot more challenging for you than you mm -hmm. think. Yeah, the, you know, a lot, there's a lot that has to do with that. Um, you know, the simple, the length of the barrel, you know, typically barrels are in between four and five inches long. It's very short. That gun right there, which is a, a long gun, but it's still an eight inch barrel. Right. And typically you got 10, 14 and a half. I mean, those guns are, they're a lot more accurate and a rifle is stabilized. It's, you know, you have three points of contact. You got both your hands on it and it's on your body itself. When you're holding a pistol out in front of you, you know, have to stabilize that gun you know, and, and shoot the iron sights too, which is a lot of people, that's probably one of the biggest hurdles I have with brand new students is the side alignment, you know, dominant eye, fr uh, front sight focus. I mean, those three things right there. And then of course, you know, trigger squeeze, which is probably the single most important uh, um, shooting fundamental out of all of those I just described, I didn't describe all of them. But, um, but yeah, it's, that's why we, we do spend a lot of time on the pistol and it, in my opinion, um, out of all of our training levels, the pistol um, level one through three, those are the hardest. Yeah. Those are the hardest because shooting the pistol is the hardest. You know, and we start our students off right off the bat at holsters. They're wearing holsters. Okay. And one of the reasons for that is, you know, it's always a little awkward. I've always noticed like people on ranges that don't have a holster and they're just standing there with a gun in their hand and it's kind of like, mm, you know, everybody that's shot a lot that doesn't, that usually has holsters. If I see somebody on the range just holding a gun, it's, it's awkward, right? You're like, yeah. all right, what do you do with that thing? And, it, <laughs> and then even the students like, what, where do I point this? You know, so we start them off, you know, right up, right out of the bat in the holster. So, you know, we have different ways of safing the gun and one of them, whether it's loaded or not, is in the holster, just put it in the holster, right? Yeah. So you can walk around, you can, you know, go get a drink of water or whatever. So we start our students off with using holsters and they have a holster on pretty much the entire time right. throughout the entire process and we talked about when we were developing the program we talked about it and and actually I think Gingus is like well, let's start them off you know let's start them off have a holster on them that way they can get all you know they can get their gear set up which we provide initially so we provide all the gear and equipment as to include the guns that are um, beautifully logoed as you can see yes. right? <laughs> custom Yes. Custom, I forget who the company was that did that, but they did a great job. Um, so we, you know, we, we, we start them off literally already at a very high level of training. Yeah. So they show up and they're like, well, I have a holster on and, the, you know, it, it, it's a very um, empowering feeling for them, for the students, because they're like, wow, I'm like this, I'm doing this, you know. Yeah. 
And um, that's, I see it time and time again. It's, it's, it's actually really cool. And I, I love teaching new students because I love seeing people progress. It's, it's really cool. And that's the cool thing too, is those new students, you know, when you get someone, if someone's, like, if someone has any type of ability or coordination and they're, they're motivated and they're dedicated, the, the, the learning curve that you see them go through is just, you know, I have a student, we started out, and we've been training now for a year together. And, you know, when we started out, like, just for him to get on the paper was a miracle. And now he's like, if he's not in and shooting in a, a nine or a 10 bullseye, now he's really upset with himself. Now, yeah, it's taken him a year to get there, but, you know, to see someone go through that progression and that transition is pretty incredible. And like Steve said, I think is really important, you know, that, you know, Tim, and with what you do, you know, I think a big thing of what you do is you give people confidence. And I think that's what we want to do is give people confidence with, with this firearm to protect themselves. And that the level of confidence that you see someone have when they're consistently hitting the target in the right place, as opposed to when they started, is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, along those lines, when, what I want everybody to understand is it, it's amazing how quickly you can get people doing what, what most other groups would, would consider advanced and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, when people are, from what you guys have seen in the industry, and again, you don't have, we're not going to talk about anybody in particular or anything like that or any program in particular, but what are some things when you're evaluating? You know, if people are saying, hey, I don't know that I can come to Vegas anymore, you know, anytime soon, I'd love to train with you guys, but hey, in my local area, if I'm looking for somebody, what, I guess, what would be the red flags that are more important than, you know? As it, like red flags, like how? As a is as, as an instructor, like if your instructor is this type of a guy, you know, type of a thing. I mean, the one thing that I, I'm always impressed with, and this is why I never have problems recommending you, is yes, you're a former tier one guy, but there's no gun store commando stuff with you. You you relate to people. Your human nature skills are, are, are really top notch, and you take the best of tier one abilities that are customized for civilian client. That's a rare thing because I see a lot of guys trying to like keep it military and mm. the, the, it doesn't translate to the, to the client. Well, I mean, a lot of it is my personality, number one. Um, I love my old job, but I didn't love the military right. per se. <laughs> right. So the military side of it was um, not comfortable for me, but you know, the command I was at, we had the luxury of bringing in a lot of civilian shooters. We would, you know, whoever, that guy, that top guy that year for three gun, like, right. hey, guess what? We're gonna hire you, you're gonna come, and you're gonna train with us for a week, or two weeks, or whatever. Or we would go, you know, to their facility, and we would train with them, and I, we literally had the opportunity, thank God, to train with, you know, 30, 40 different types of pro-level shooters. and. You know, again, um, those are competition shooters, but what we do is we go to these schools or have these seminars with these pro shooters or comp shooters, and we would just take little little tools. You know, like, oh, that's I like what he does. Obviously, we're not gonna shoot like that because we're not competition shooters, but we're gonna take that little tool there. It's really, it's, you know, shaves some time off your draw or something like that, and we take those tools and put them in our toolbox, right? So, and then we would apply them to our, our job, which is combat shooting, obviously. So. We had the opportunity, so I think a lot of um, my teaching skills comes out of those those seminars and stuff that we did with those pro shooters, because pretty much every single one of them was civilians. They all were, yeah. right? Just we did the same thing in the parachuting industry. Like we would go out and we'd hire the best canopy pilots or the best competition skydivers, and we'd go to their schools and we would take their take their techniques and we'd apply them to our job. Yeah, and we had that luxury where where I was at and. Um, and so what we're doing now is we're taking all those tools and taking them into the civilian world yeah. and now we're giving people the opportunity to, to learn it. And um, it's a rare opportunity and that's one thing that I believe that sets Dark Desert Defense above the rest. Um, and that may be egotistical to say that, but it does. It simply does. And, um, all the instructors that are here that we have, that we use, it's not just Genghis and I, we have um, of course, all my all my friends, current and retired, yeah. um, and then of course, in Genghis's uh, old line of work as well. So we have very very high level guys, and trust me, there's people that I know are really good shooters 
but they're maybe not the kind of guy, which I think you oh, yeah. may have kind of led in on there a little bit. And, and you know, we, we, uh, we handpick our instructors. Right. We'll just, let's, let's leave it at that. And, you know, the right guy for the right, the right job. And um, our instructors are, are very good. Um, and we, you know, we, we have a standard we all shoot at and as well as we hold our clients to as right. well. So when they're going through the levels, like Genghis mentioned earlier, you know, when you get through level one, you're going to test out. And when you're ready or when we think you're ready, you know, and um, another, another good, great thing about our program is that when we start to notice our students or our clients start to get comfortable, we move on to the next thing. So they're never really comfortable. And what I mean by that is, you know, once they start getting like kind of smooth and like, oh yeah, this is cool. Then all right, all right, guess what? We're moving on. Yeah. Now we're going to move on to, you know, mag changes on the shot timer. Right. And then we start getting good at that. We start, we just start pushing them more and more. And like I said, this, this course isn't watered down. And our, our entire goal is to get you proficient and get you through those levels at your pace, like Ingus mentioned earlier. And it is at your pace. Like you put in the time, you're going to, you're going to fly through it. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, this is really important. Yeah, he and I would joke if we'd, you know, we, we, we were like, we've got to be really careful with our instructors because I'm like, one day we're going to walk in the VIP room and there's going to be like a customer doing press-ups, crying on the floor with some guy over there like, ah, screaming at him. <laughs> so we've got to be careful. But I think, yeah, that's, you know, that's the big thing is like, like I said, Steve's done a great job of taking that, those skill sets from, from being with a tier one unit and sort of molded them into what we're doing. And then for me, you know, I've been lucky in that I've had, had to, ex I've got some experience shooting with competition shooters, high level shooters, both from a competition perspective and also from a military perspective. And exactly the same thing as Steve, you know, like just picking those little things out that, oh, you know, what are these things that I, what are the things that I learned in that that will enable me, you know, you know, Taryn Butler's a good friend of mine. I learned a lot about shooting from Taryn. And, um, and then Taryn, will, you know, I'll be shooting with Taryn and then he'll have his friends come in and then they'll just, oh, Genghis, you should try this, you know, and I think that's the other big thing. Both Steve and I, you know, I mean, Steve is a, from a combat shooting perspective, there's not many people I know with more combat shooting experience than Steve. And, you know, but Steve's super open, you know, he and I will talk about things and we'll go, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. So I didn't think of that, but yeah, well, let's try that and see if it works. So we're both very practical. So if, if you, if we're doing something one way and you say, well, if I do it this way, it's more efficient and it's faster, okay, well, let's do it that way then, <laughs> you know, we're not stuck in our way. So we're quite fluid, I think, in the way that we do things and we're, we're just about what's going to be the safest, most efficient way to get our clients proficient with a firearm. Yeah, and I just want to kind of like make, a, make a real clear point for people that you know, there's a lot, you know, Steve and I had this conversation a while back too, like, hey, there's a lot of stuff within high level training, like, you know, what a tier one unit would go through um, that is achievable uh, by, by regular people. It's not there. It's, it's like Genghis and I used to laugh all the time. People would come in, hey, we really want to do a sniper course. You know, want to, yeah. like, no, you don't. No, you don't. You want to shit be a, in a plastic bag. For you like want to be a marksman. Weeks, yeah. You know, you want to shit. You, you want to shoot. And you want to see a thousand years. You want to hear ping. That's what you want to do. You don't want to be, you know, sitting out for three days, you know, cramped up, you know, going in there. Like, I, I don't think people understand. Like a lot of the military skill sets that make an operator are environmental. They are mission driven. There's a lot of other stuff, but the actual. Um, weapons manipulation and all that other stuff, not only is it a more efficient way of learning the skill set, uh, obviously tested by, you know, like you said, you guys had everybody, you have the budget to, to really look at everything. And that's what your clients get. They get the benefit of that all those, all those years and, and the adjustments you make on the fly on people and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, talk a little bit about, cause this is the number one question I get all the time. I'm sure you guys get it. What gun should I buy? You know, what, what they're coming in. You guys, obviously, <laughs> yeah. But, but you guys, you, you, you mentioned Glock, and there's a reason, you know, there, there, there's a reason we've all talked about that before. But can you share with everybody, like, what is it about Glock that you guys like, and, and why is it such a, you know, obviously it's ubiquitous, but I mean, you know, what is it about the Glock platform? That, that well, let me answer like? the first kind of question there you kind of started to allude to, and that is, um, you know, the guns, like yeah. picking a gun or owning guns. And, you know, we all know 
a lot of people, very good friends of mine, I'm sure you too, that own all these different gun platforms. You know, I got a Glock, I got a SIG, I got a 45, I got a whatever. And, you know, what I say to that is, okay, um, and we were laughing about this the other day, getting us an air of an off, you know, this conversation about people, because we get it all the time, like, well, you know, I got a Glock and I love shooting this and that. And I'm like, well, if you own three or four different pistol platforms, you probably don't shoot any of them very well at all. Right. So, and I don't mean that disrespectful, I'm just saying like, you would have, that's a full-time job to know to shoot all those guns proficiently. So one of the things when you come to us, we just, we shoot the Glock here. And I got, I started shooting the Glock after, um, right after I retired, I started shooting the Glock because um, uh, some Army D-boys, I was, a buddy of mine, we started a shooting company for another company. We basically built the program for them. And at the time I was shooting a SIG because I shot the SIG Sour 226 for 22 years. So I shot the SIG very well. Um, you know, it's a double action, single action. It's got a decock on it. It's got a lot going on. It's busy. It's a busy gun. And if you show up here with that gun and you've never shot it before, I'm gonna say, well, I hope you kept the receipt because I recommend <laughs> you go take that thing back or I don't know. Put it, they're beautiful guns and they're great guns. They're awesome guns, but if you don't put the time in, I mean, I shot that gun for 22 years. And like I said, it's still, it's not an easy gun to shoot. But I started, and then I bought a Glock because the guys I was working with had a Glock. And like, all right, let me check this thing out. And I bought it and immediately I loved it. And, um, and now, at the time we were training the military, and now pretty much all of the soft units are now shooting the Glock. And the reason being, the reason I believe they went to this gun uh, is that it's what they call a combat weapon. Um, it's very easy to load. It's, uh, it's single action, that's it. There's no hammer on it. It's, it's safe as long as you keep your finger. So I tell clients like, your safety's right here. That gun really doesn't have a safety. They say it's got that little, you know, little indent there on the trigger, really. Um, it's a tiny piece of plastic that's probably a sixteenth of an inch you know, that keeps the trigger from getting pulled. But um, no, it's a very simple gun to shoot. It's relatively cheap if you want to buy one. And one of the things I love about the Glock is that, you know, you can turn that thing into a race car too. Yeah. You, know, you can put all these whiz bang triggers and slides and barrels and barrel springs and you name it on and on. But um, that's why we teach people on the Glock. And the cool thing about the Glock platform is that whether it's a 17 or a 19 or a 34 or a 43, it's a Glock. Right. And they make, you know, whether you want to carry it concealed, like, you know, you got a 43, yep. it's the same gun. It's just either smaller or bigger, same gun. And the cool thing about the 19 and the 40, uh, the, excuse me, the 34, are like those, all those parts are kind of interchangeable too. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to, I'll just go down that road because probably most of your um, viewers here probably already know most of that. Um, so yeah, that's that's one of the biggest reasons um, we teach uh, we teach off that platform. I love it. And and, and we met, sort of Steve and I made a decision because you know I got a, I got friends who are like oh, I've got a Sig two two six or I've got a Smith and Wesson or I've got a 45, 1911. and and I, I sort of said to Steve I said the problem we're going to have is that in my opinion is that we is that you got all these people with different guns and this guy's going to forget to do his decocking lever and this guy's you know we're, this guy's going to advance quicker because. You're going to master trigger control, in, a, in my opinion, in a single action pistol far quicker than you're going to master trigger control in a double action pistol because you've got two different pressures of trigger pull. And the great thing about a Glock is, is it, and, and this is why I love it, it's like Steve, I have a 43, a 42, a 19, a 17, a 34, and they all strip down the same way, they all shoot the same way, the trigger feel is the same way, the grip is the same way. All the IAs on it are the same, so if you get a blockage, if you get you know, reloads, all those things are the same. So, like I said, our goal is to create the most efficient program to get our clients shooting efficiently and safely. And in our opinion, the best platform for that is a block. All right, so we talked about platforms, we've talked about uh, kind of you know your approach especially with the new clients and I don't want to give people the impression you only work with new clients because that's not true you guys have worked no, with lots all. of all, all different levels um, when they come here to train like what what do you like about you know the facilities you know and, and how you approach the facilities you guys you start most people out right here um, on, on an indoor an indoor facility platform obviously we've got some some cool other places we can take people but, but kind of talk about the idea of, 
of that. I mean, I know when I walk in there with Steve and we, it's just us on the range and we're able to do what, you know, whatever he wants us to do there. There's a, it's, it's almost, I remember the first time I've seen people walk, once they walk past onto the <laughs> range, they think they're doing something wrong, you know? Right, yeah. Because they think they're supposed to be behind, you know, behind the, the, the gate and everything. But what, why is that important? Why is that important for people to, to be able to do that right away? Um, well, as you mentioned, you know, here at uh, MGV, we have this, VIP room, um, or you guys have this VIP room here, so it's very private. Yeah. You know, it's one on one, which is the way we prefer it typically. Uh, you know, if we get a couple clients, we can put them through the initial, the first classroom kind of portion. And then after that, we like to get people on the range individually. And um, not only for safety, but just that one on one, because we're watching like every move you make. Um, the cool thing about, like you just mentioned about the range, I had never shot on indoor ranges really at all until um, Genghis and I started this company. And I don't, you know, typically you go to an indoor range and you know, like you said, it's the forbidden zone behind yeah. the, yeah. behind the, whatever those things, the barricade. Yeah. And you know, you're not in your little cubby. And um, first of all, the reason we go down range, like I don't like being in that thing. Um, we need to watch you and we need to uh, be right next to you. And a lot of times, you know, people get comfortable, uncomfortable because they'll be shooting and I'll step out for example, I'll step out by their barrel because I'm, I'm looking at their, what their eyes are doing, if they're closed, if they're squinting, what, where the sights are lined up. Is it lined up with your dominant eye or not lined up with your dominant eye? So we're watching a lot of stuff and when we first start you know, shooting with people, I am really less concerned with where the bullet's going and more concerned about what you're doing, what your body's doing, what your finger's doing, what your grip looks like and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's fun to have people experience that because when they go past, if they've ever shot at an indoor range, because it's very unusual, yeah. like when I lift it up, I'm like, well, come on down here. Because some people just stand there like, what, you having a, <laughs> what, what are we doing down there? Yeah, <laughs> you know? funny, and, that is funny. But we like, you know, we'll get on both sides, especially when we start doing draws and stuff like that. We um, need the space. That's yeah. what, you know, we have to have that space. And, uh, um, and it's also fun to see people get out of their comfort zone too. Yeah, and I think, you know, I, I'm, I do the same thing as Steve, you know, I'm, I'm always like, they'll freak out a little bit, like, with, with, the, with the gun when they're, like, I, I got to see you shoot, I got to see where your fingers are, I got to see where your grip is, I got to see, you know, I, you know, you're telling me you've got both eyes open, but do you really have both eyes open? You know, I'm, you know, there's all kinds of things we're looking at, I get right behind them, I get in their, right behind their line of sight to see where they're shooting, so I think this is a great facility too, because, because of the containment of the indoor range, you sort of know, kind of like Steve said, that if they're pulling the trigger, the bullet's going at least in that direction, and it's fine because everything in that direction is safe, and that gives you the ability to sort of work with them. And then, and we have outdoor facilities as well. And once they reach a level where we feel that that, that from a safety perspective, we can put them in a, in a bigger environment where they have to control their own safe. They're responsible for their own safety then we take them to outdoor facilities and then we can start training them outdoors. And that's the, the outdoor portion of it is kind of, that's where it gets to be real fun because you know, you're shooting steel targets and paper doesn't react, you know, Tim, you've shot steel, so the steel reacts, you know, you hear it hit, it's, a, it's like instant, play, you know, it's that instant gratification of, hey, I'm, I'm hitting the target. And you start moving the gun around too, you know, if you, in here we're limited to a very small range fan. I mean, they're pretty much, you know, you can move the gun about that much inside the range, inside the indoor range, but outdoors, you know, we start moving the gun a lot more. You know, we can move, you know, out there, wherever we're shooting outdoors, you know, we can, we pretty much have almost 180 degrees range fan out there that we can, we can play around with at any given time um, with the pistol and the rifle as well. And uh, like Genghis mentioned, when, when we feel that they're ready to go to the outdoor, we take them outdoors. And I can tell you right now, and there's my client right now is will tell you all day long that it's a completely different game out there. It's a completely different game, and um, and you know it really forces you to you know really be very disciplined on those basic shooting fundamentals because people you know they're like, well, Steve wants me to shoot the little red dot on the indoor range, but now that piece of steel is huge. I'd shoot wherever I want. And guess what? They, they're, all, they're all over the place. They start missing, they're like, how did I miss that? I'm like, well, you're not doing what I told you initially, which, you know, we go through all the five shooting fundamentals and we drill those every single time. Drill, yeah. drill, drill. And that's one of the things that, um, that well, it'll make you a better shooter is basic fundamentals. So. 
Yeah, and uh, can you can you talk a little bit also about um, because this is the the one thing I, I see a lot of people not really consider the idea of of mindset, you know, and and and, and how people because a lot of people will sit there and say, I don't think I ever could, you know, defend myself or or or, or, or do that. I, I in my industry, I have to deal with that all the time. But I, I know a lot of people say, I, I just don't I don't think I could ever actually shoot somebody or or you know, how do you take somebody who obviously probably has a real need, I mean, a firearm would greatly improve their safety as far as the, their lifestyle and what they're doing, but how do you walk somebody who's a little hesitant through that, and how do, you, how do you start developing some mindset aspects for them? Well, I think the first thing that we do here is um, we give people the, the, um, the confidence to pick up that gun and load it and carry it around or have it in their house, and just by simply doing that, once they have the confidence about doing that, um, you know, we train mindset on the range all the time. And for example, one of the things that is always one of the hurdles is when people are doing mag changes. Because, you know, when somebody is doing a mag change on the range and the gun goes dry, they're immediately like, they want to take the magazine out as if it's, you know, a tool. <laughs> but one of the things is like, oh, dude, it's not a wine glass. Like, just let the thing hit the ground, right? In my mind, in our mind, our mindset is that thing is it's disposable. It's yeah. nothing. It's just not doing you any good anymore. And so that's when we start talking about mindsets. Like when that gun goes dry, you know, our thing was always train like you fight. Train like you fight. And people get into a bad, very bad habits on ranges, especially. You know, they don't want their new magazine to get scratched because it's going to hit the floor. That's not our mindset. Because if you're in a situation and your gun, you have to do a media action drill or your gun goes dry, it has to happen right now. It can't take the magazine out and put it back in the pouch and then take a new one out. That's, that's mindset stuff and it's just the, 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 the process. It's like train like you fight. Once the drill's over, once you're done shooting, then you can go back into admin mode right? right and do that stuff. We, as far as the mindset, as far as like defending your own home, um, I think by getting people, first of all, uncomfortable initially, and then they get comfortable and they have the confidence in handling the gun. They have the confidence in having the gun in their house loaded. Because if your gun's in your house and it's not loaded, it might as well be a cup, or a, it's just a chunk, a chunk of metal. Now, you know, we also cover, you know, safely storing loaded guns in the house, you know, in a safe or a trigger lock or whatever. So we talk about that stuff too. So um, the mindset stuff, Again, every aspect of our training, we always talk mindset. Yeah, I, I, I mean, just basically to add to what Steve was talking about, it's, you know, when we create that mindset, it's when you see people gain that confidence, that helps create that mindset for them. And I think, you know, I have the same thing as Steve, you know, I'll be in there and they're using our equipment and they're like, I'm like, okay, mag change and they'll, oh, they'll take the mag out you know it's those, those little things like just drop it yeah but it's it, what if it breaks it breaks i said it's it's mm -hmm. it's it's just treat it like it's toilet paper and a lot of probably gun people would be like oh no you can't do that but you know that's kind of how you got to treat it you just use it and you throw it away because if you if you're in a life-threatening situation you don't care about the 12 dollar or 14 dollar magazine that just broke apart on the ground yeah. it, that's not your that's not your issue so i think that's a good way thing with mindset and the other thing i find and it's interesting tim because you you know, you're the one who's, who first sort of made me realize this, is that a lot of the people that we meet and come to us are people that have either had a bad experience or come really close to having a bad experience. And that in, it, in and of itself has helped change that mindset, yeah. you know. Yeah, they, can, they come very open to it. And I think probably one of the coolest things is I tell people all the time, even if they don't even if they don't think they're ever going to carry a gun or anything, it is worth going through training just to freaking understand how these things work, to ha get rid of all the irrational fear. Because mm -hmm. that's it. Like we had one, I, mean, I don't know if you remember, we had a Richard's wife from the UK. Yeah. She was in here one time, that's a friend of ours. And the woman literally was in here shaking and, and crying as the guns were going up. And she's a really cool woman. It's just That was her effect. Yeah. By the time we got her through, on the whole thing, she had a huge smile on her face and she went through and now she's never gonna own a gun. Mm -hmm. You know, so they live in the UK and everything, but she said, she's told me multiple times how helpful that was. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that, oh, okay, now I know it. It's, it's just like, it's the unknown and, and you will make this into a monster 
Um, and once you understand it's, hey, it's just a machine, it operates this way, this is yep. how it is, and this is, yep. this is what it does. I, 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 like for all my clients, I always make sure they have to know, they have to know how to use a weapon so they know what, it, what makes it effective, why it is, and that way you can you know, get your plan together and how you're gonna deal with somebody that, that might have one of these. Mm -hmm. so, so there's lots of different benefits to the, to the training aspect of things, but I, I think what I, what I love about it, because you know, when I work with Steve, it's the same thing. I remember I had I just got those new freaking ink caps <laughs> on. I'm sitting there. We let it go. I'm like, fuck it, boom, and it goes down, boom. And I go to pick it up. It's like, jing, 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 you know, it's just dying. Oh, there goes that twenty bucks out the window there. But what was great was like, you didn't even think twice about it. You know, it like it's no, it's no big deal to to do that because you're so in the moment. And I think that's where people people get really weird with their equipment and stuff. Yeah. It's like, no, you, you're, what are you training for? You know, you're, tra you're training yep. to defend yourself and therefore, you know, you, you got to make sure that you understand that and you keep that type of mindset. And it's been, it's a proven fact. Uh, I mean, there's so many stories about, you know, you're going to do what you're going to, if you do that on the range, if you, you're going to do that in a high stress situation because everything is going to get really small. Yeah. In a high stress situation, you're going to do, you're going to have that muscle memory of shooting, the gun goes dry and you're going to take the magazine out. Um, you're just gonna do it, it's a proven fact. So like I said, train like you fight. There's a story that I saw early on in my career, a training video um, from the FBI and a couple of FBI agents did a, um, a felony pullover, pulled the guy over, he gets out of his car, he's like, game on, they get in a gunfight. Like, car to car, get in a gunfight, two FBI agents, one, one felon, one gun. Um, both the FBI agents ended up, unfortunately, um, dying behind their vehicle. They both had sport coats on, and back then they shot the, you know, the 38, the revolver, and both of them did several reloads. All the shells were in their pockets of their sport coats. Why? Because that's what they do on the range. If you ever shot at the FBI up there in DC, their range is beautiful. It's manicured, it's got sidewalks and grass, it looks like a golf course. Well, when they go out there, back then when they were training, they would go out there and shoot the paper, and then we'd go to reload, they'd take their brass out, ka-ching, and put it in their pockets. Reload, speed loader, and shoot again. And that's what they did over and over because they didn't want to drop the brass and they wanted to pick it up, right? Because they had to pick, they had to clean the range up after they're done. So they just were putting brass. And unfortunately for those guys, that the time it took, two guys against one, the time it took for them to take the brass out and put it in their pockets. So I tell everybody that story because it's a proven fact. You're going to do what you're going to do, and you know that too. Right. Like you're going to resort to that that movement. You're going to do you're going to do exactly that. So. Um, like Genghis mentioned, you know, through the process of going through our levels, you're going to learn the mindset's going to come because we're going to talk about it. We talk about it all the time. Yeah. yeah. So it's built into the program. So, what, um, you know, coming, coming from a country that, you know, there are fire, obviously there's firearms in, in New Zealand, but very different protocols over there. Um, and, and especially even in the last couple of years, there have been different protocols and stuff. What, do you think Americans, appreciate what they have with the Second Amendment and do you I mean how do you see it from an international standpoint now you know you being here as long as you've been uh, I, I mean you know in our friend David same thing I mean the one thing that's really interesting is friends of ours that, that are immigrants that have come in here and come that they value the ability to do this I mean David David might as well wear a cowboy hat all the time you know, and uh, oh yeah, oh, yeah practically can in yeah, Vegas. Yeah. He's, he's, he's in there, and we, and we crack up that, that it, it seems to be like a lot of our our, our immigrant friends appreciate uh, the idea of having the Second Amendment than the most Americans do a lot of times. Well, I, you know, I think in in the countries like mine, New Zealand, you know, it's really interesting that very recently in the last two years because of a mass shooting they lost a lot of you know a lot of the firearms were taken away from them and in all honesty a lot of my friends in New Zealand were like yeah you know I don't really need an assault rifle but they you know they still like to have shotguns and they still like to have that in New Zealand pistols are very diff have always been very difficult to own um, but there's there's violent crime in New Zealand and you know I like the fact that I can carry a weapon concealed on me when I'm out and about and I can protect myself and my friends or whoever I'm with, you know, in those situations. So I, I think that, that the Second Amendment is a great thing. But to me, and a lot of people probably disagree with me, I, I also think it's, it, with it comes responsibility. Responsibility to yourself, your family, and other citizens. So, it, it, you know, I mean, 
this thing here is designed for one purpose. You know, the Glock 17 is designed for one purpose and one purpose only, and that's to kill a human. It's not designed for target shooting. It's not designed to shoot rabbits or, you know, anything like that. That is designed to kill a human being. So if you are going to take the responsibility of carrying a tool around that was solely designed for the purpose of killing another human, I think you have a social responsibility to know how to use it properly. And whether you learn from us or you learn from anyone else, you have that responsibility. And you know, Steve and I, Steve and I sort of use that as one of the founding facts of this business is that you know, a good person with good skills in knowing how to use that gun is, a, is useful to society and useful to the community. Yeah, and uh, you know, we mentioned earlier, I think my theory on concealed is that, <clears throat> you know, I, most people out there that carry concealed, I have several friends that have concealed that don't even own a gun, and you're more harm than you are good because, yeah. you know, and they, they teach this in the concealed course, you know, the, the, the consequences of, you know, if you're in a situation and you have to pull a gun out and use it, if you're not proficient with that weapon, you're probably gonna either shoot yourself or shoot an innocent bystander and you're never you're probably never gonna hear target. Right. You're gonna and then guess what? And you're going to jail. Yeah. Hundred percent. You're going. So if you do have a concealed carry, like if I had I don't even I don't even own a, I don't have a concealed carry, never have. Um, but you know, if you're gonna get one, then I highly recommend being whatever weapon system you're carrying, you be very proficient with. It. And I actually Talking to somebody the other day, I mean, in the state of Nevada, correct me if I'm wrong, you can open carry, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, like, in my mind, if you're going to carry, open carry. Because think about it. If you are a bad guy and you walk into a store and there's three people in there that are open carrying, you're probably going to be like, Do you know what? <laughs> probably not today. <laughs> probably not today. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like kind of like the Wild West. Like, man, this guy's walking around with a gun on his hip and a holster on his belt hanging out of his t-shirt, which is t totally legal, right? I mean, are you, gonna, are you gonna get it on? Probably not. And I mean, that's just kind of like my thought process, but um, you know, the consequences of having a concealed carry, I mean, that's, you know, they're, they're real for sure. And I don't think a lot of people, I don't really realize that. Yeah, I would agree with Steve 100%. I, 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 you know, I carry concealed only for the purpose that, you know, I just don't like carrying a big heavy firearm on my side. So, and, and, but I've open carried as well. And honestly, well, and you're proficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, but, but, and here's the other reality. You are, unless you're a very, very, very good shooter, an open carry is always going to draw on a target faster than a concealed carry. It's just timing. And, you know, Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Steve will tell you the time between you identifying the target and shooting the target and that target shooting at you because you're only going to really shoot someone if they're either going to stab you or they're going to shoot you the quicker you can get around on that target I mean, it's the difference between life and death it really is so not only do i agree with steve from the perspective of seeing a gun on your hip as a deterrent but i would also say that it, it's actually going to get you to get a target well hit the target quicker because most people, even if they practice concealed, they practice Very difficult. from an open carry position way more. Yeah. And when you first actually start, now I've, I've taught people to shoot from a concealed position, and like Steve said, it's really difficult. They, their, their hand gets caught in their t-shirt, or their grip is wrong, or they drop the gun, or they don't have the, you know, their finger in the right place. It's just, it's always a shit show. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, the, I did an interview, uh, with Dennis Tooler, the guy that came up with the Tooler drill at 21 feet. And, I, and there's another interview that I, I show people all the time. And he talks about the fact that, hey, there's nothing special about the 20, 21 feet. He goes, that's how far we were shooting. And the question was, hey, if a guy with a knife is running at me full speed from that far away, can I deploy my, my gun and go? And he said, but there's nothing special about 21 feet. It's not a, not a talisman. He goes, as a matter of fact, and this is what caught me, was he goes, when we did other drills, Depending if you're a concealed carry, if it's a deep, if it's a deep conceal, he goes, it could be upwards of 65 to 75 feet. People can run you down before you can deploy your, your, your <laughs> weapon. Um, he said it was staggering when you saw that. He said that was, you know, mostly open carry coming in. They kind of knew what, knew what was coming in. The guy with the knife could still get in in 21 feet. 
I think what's funny about people is it's, it's kind of like, it's the same thing with pepper spray. I've seen people, they have it. They've literally never trained with it. They've never done the inert spray. They have no idea how it sprays correctly, what, what it comes in. Not that I, I hate pain compliance weapons anyways, but I, I equivocate that to, to this. Like you're curing concealed, you've never done a concealed dry. You don't, how do you, you know, how do you, how do you get under, get under your foot? You know, do you lean over? What do you do? So uh, listen guys, I think, I think this is a good first. I've been wanting to have this, uh, this talk for quite some time um, and, and introduce you guys to, uh, to our audience. Um, we'll be doing more of these uh, because there's more quite, you guys have a ton of questions, I understand, but what I wanted you to do is get a feel for how they put this together, uh, the, the program, what's available here in Vegas, and um, as we start showing, we'll be providing you guys more content from the guys here at Dark Desert. They're, gonna, they're, they're cool enough to let me share some of their content with you guys. And um, I'll obviously let you guys know uh, when training opens up, what's available. Um, and we're going to be launching our website <clears throat> here shortly, too. Awesome. Yeah, so yeah. we'll launch our website. And, and, we'll so let we'll, you know we'll share all the social down. media stuff that's on there. And then uh, I'll, be, I'll be putting it out because I'm going to have these guys do some special courses just for you guys. Um, and we'll get that going. But listen, I appreciate all the questions everybody's had. Um, that's what this T-shirt's all about. That's why. <laughs> a secret T-shirt <laughs> that we're doing it. Um, and I just want you to consider that if you are a new gun owner, this type of a program is really something that will take you from soup to nuts if your goal is to be able to defend yourself with a firearm, which is a very specific skill set. And so make sure if that's what you want, that you're going somewhere that teaches you specifically that type of skill set. And with that, man, thanks, guys. Cool. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Right on, Okay, listen, in the show notes, you'll have all the contact information for Dark Desert and um, uh, the, the website, everything is going to be up very soon, so you're going to see that, but I'm going to keep you in the loop because I'm going to be going through some of their programs and you're going to be seeing us at various sites, you'll see us in the indoor ranges, you'll see me um, out in the outdoor ranges, I go through um, additional training with Steve and uh, some variety of uh, people that we have uh, in and out training with us here in Vegas. Uh, and the reason I want to do that is because I want to kind of show people hands-on what's going on, what we do out here, and how it works in with what I'm doing with Target Focus Training. You know, like everything we do uh, is designed to train the brain and body to be even better when you have weapons. And so we're going to show that, you know, progression. We're going to show some of the things that we have out here at our ranch in Vegas and at our indoor facilities. So I hope you liked it. Please, if you did, uh, share the video. Subscribe, and again, to start off with your self-protection needs, go to timlarkin.com, give us your email. You will get a free masterclass. It's a free masterclass, okay? And it will start you down that path to creating a program that will minimize the chance of violence coming into your life or your family's life. All the best.